thali peer recipe now i'm using 200 grams of a ready made thali peer flour i like to use the capra uh, brand it's really good and you don't have to add anything except two large onions that i've chopped fine now keep your pan i'm using a iron heavy pan that i use for my dosas i've kept it on uh, you know to preheat and i'm just going to add two tablespoons of curd or dahi now mix all of this really nicely and well together and i'm just going to add a little water at a time so in total i used about a uh, one fourth cup of water but go very slow on the water add a little at a time maybe about like four tablespoons at a time and just keep kneading the dough we do want to get a nice thick dough but not like a chapati or puri dough but it has to be nice and thick not too watery and not too dry either so in total i think one fourth cup of water should be enough after mixing everything just set it aside just for 5 minutes now here i'm going to be making the thali bit so here i have some water i've taken butter paper i like to use butter paper it works really well and the mixture here i have my iron pan heating now what i do is i just dip my fingertips in the water a little and just apply it on the paper then i take a line sized bowl of the dough and i just make it into a nice smooth round like a laddu and then i just press it down on the paper and i just flatten it out as much as i can so keep dipping your fingers in the water and just keep spreading it out and make it as thin as possible and just see that the edges are all you know in the it becomes a nice round circle so even out the edges as you go by and then just make a hole in the center since the thali bead has a you know this kind of a shape and now just invert the paper like this and just peel off the butter paper you can reuse this for all of the thali beads and then i'm just going to add just a little bit of ghee or you can even go with oil i like adding ghee to my thali bead so just drizzle a little bit of ghee just all around it and then let it heat up and cook till it's nice and golden brown on both sides so here i've made another one too it's super simple and really easy and once it's nice and golden brown just flip it onto the other side and make uh, you know let the other side also cook well and become nice and crispy and golden brown in color now this is really a kind of a meal that i go to when i'm not in the mood of really making some elaborate dish so i always have like you know at least two packets of thali peet in my house and you know, on my pantry rather and if i don't make this then i go to make mokar bhazani i have a recipe for that i will leave a, a link below so these are like really good favorites and they're light meals and you know you don't have to do anything extra it's just all in you know, one you don't have to add anything much and in this way just keep frying them till they're nice and golden brown i think with one packet i get almost about 10 medium sized thali beads so they should look like this nice and dark and golden brown in color and i like to serve them with some chilled dahi or curd or yogurt it's amazing so just try out this recipe guys it's delicious and i'll catch you in my next video bye this is akshita signing off take care recipe now first i'm going to Coarsely crush 15 cloves of garlic in my mortar and pestle. So we have garlic like this. So do not put it in the mixer. Grams of amboli because I'm going to be making 12 ambolis, and this is easily available in any general store. I will leave the recipe of how you can make it at home if you can't get your hands on this uh, flour. Now I'm going to add the crushed garlic to this amboli peat or amboli flour. Next I'm going to add half a teaspoon of haldi or turmeric powder and 1 teaspoon of red chili powder. So this is the regular chili powder. Next I'm going to add some salt to taste. Now I'm going to add about 1/4 cup of fresh 
coriander leaves or kothimbir and now I'm going to mix everything really nicely and I'm going to keep adding a little water at a time so basically this batter should be like a dosa batter it shouldn't be too runny it shouldn't be too thick so here for about 250 grams of uh, amburi flour or peat I used about just one liter of water short of say two to three tablespoons like you will see so this is a one liter bottle of water but I used almost all the water leaving around two tablespoons so mix everything really well till you have a lump free batter you want a very smooth batter like a dosa batter now this ambori can be eaten for breakfast you can take it for your tiffin you can give it to your kids for their school tiffin it's really a very healthy option and it's really delicious so mix everything so like I said, for 250 grams of flour, I used almost a liter of water. And pour a little at a time. Don't pour the entire water at one time. Pour a little at a time till you get the perfect consistency. And once you have that, I'm just taking a whisk so that I get a very smooth batter. So like I'll show you in the bottle how much water is left. So you'll get some kind of an idea. See, that's just this much water left. Otherwise, I used almost the entire liter of water. So now you're going to whisk everything really well. And then you're going to cover and keep this for 10 to 12 hours. So I like to normally do it, uh, you know, in the night. So that in the morning, I have this ready for breakfast. Or to give it to, you know, for Tiffin to my family. Now this is just a... Uh, what I like to keep in my masala box which is generally kept in a masala box so I have uh, here my turmeric powder my red chili powder some asafoetida or hing this is some mustard seeds or mohri or rai some methi seeds some cumin or jeera and this is goda masala which is homemade I leave a recipe of how I make my goda masala so these are things that I generally use okay now this is after 12 hours you can see that the batter has come nice and a little bit fluffier and here I have a heavy bottomed iron pan that I generally use to make my dosas and I've really heated it up for at least you know five to ten minutes and then just like a dosa batter I'm going to pour about, pour about four tablespoons of the batter and then I'm just going to spread it out with my spoon very lightly just like a dosa or a ghavan which is nothing but an Indian pancake which is so so delicious and so healthy too now I'm just going to drizzle a few drops of ghee now I like to use ghee but you can also go with oil and now we're just going to cover this and let it cook for about a minute or so on a low to medium flame now after a minute you'll see that the edges have started to brown a bit if you look carefully the edges have all browned up a little so now with your ulatna or your spatula just generally just gently sorry loose, uh, loosen the edges or the sides and then slowly work from the sides to the middle now one tip i like to give you is that your pan has to be really hot and try to use a nice heavy bottomed pan so i keep this pan only for my ghavan dosas uh, pancakes and uh, amboys and now just flip it over and you'll get this beautiful golden brown color and the edges get so nice and crispy and then again I'm going to drizzle a little bit of oil, uh, ghee again that's completely optional and then I'm just going to let the other side also brown a bit so you can see how beautiful and nice and brown and golden brown I, I have uh, given a little closer shot of the amboli so you can see that. So I'll just transfer this to a serving plate. For those of you who have not tried this, I suggest that you do. You get this amboi flour, you know, in almost every general store. If you are in an area like Dadar, then too you'll definitely get it on, you know, anywhere. Because it's really very, very common. So... This is the second one that I'm making. So altogether, I made 12 with uh, 250 grams of flour. And see, after the pan starts getting heated up, the amboris also get ready really fast. 
this has a totally different taste for those of you who have not tasted this so now i've taken a closer shot and you can see how crispy and delicious this is And you can serve this with a ketchup. I generally serve it with some ketchup or some homemade chutney. The choice is yours. So I hope you give this recipe a try and let me know for especially those who are trying it out for the first time what your feedback on this is. For our ingredients, I have taken about 10 to 12 of the light green chilies. That is not the very spicy chilies. I have taken about 10 cloves of garlic and an inch of ginger and a cup of fresh coriander or cilantro and some 8 to 10 uh, medium sized boiled potatoes and some salt. Now we are going to grind the chilies, the ginger, the garlic and the coriander with a salt as per taste and without adding any water, we are going to make this into a coarse paste or a coarse chutney. Now once that is done, we're going to mash our potatoes using a potato masher, a pav bhaji masher or even you can use your hands and mash up the potatoes well. You could leave little bits, little uh, small pieces of potato, even that is great. So mash it up. Now we're going to add the green paste but add a little at a time because it could be spicy. You might want to uh, keep it less spicy or you might want to make it very spicy. So keep mixing in the green paste a little at a time and keep tasting it to see whether you need to adjust the salt, whether you need to put in more of the paste. So first mix it in well and keep tasting till you get that the required uh, consistency or the required taste. So don't add the entire green paste at one time, add a little and keep tasting. So mix all of this well together. And now we are going to add the juice of half a lime. I have taken a large lime so you might have, if you are using a small lime or lemon, you can use one entire one. I am using a very big sized lime so I am using half of it. Again this will be as per your taste. Now just put a little bit of oil on your hands and make small flat balls according to how big or small you like your batata vadas. You can make it like that. We like a little bit on the smaller side. They look dainty and they taste, I mean, they look good that way. I don't like the very bulky uh, big potato, batata vadas. So just keep them all ready. This helps in making the work easier when you're frying. So prepare these and keep them aside. Now we're going to work on the batter. So for the batter, I've taken about one cup of chickpea flour, also known as besan. Now to this, I'm going to be adding a little bit of turmeric powder or haldi powder, about one fourth of a teaspoon. And I'm also going to add about one fourth of a teaspoon of cumin seeds or jeera, a little bit of salt, and we're going to add little water at a time and whisk it to make it into a slurry. Now this should not be too watery, it should not be too thick. It should be uh, like a thick dosa batter so that it evenly coats the batata vada when we are frying it. So don't make it very thin, don't make it very thick either. 
Now we're going to heat some oil in a pan in which we're going to deep fry these padas. But before that, we have to take, when the oil is nice and hot, on a low to medium flame, we're going to heat our oil. And when our oil is nice and hot, we're going to add about one teaspoon of this hot oil into our batter. This is known as mohan and it makes your batata vadas really very crispy and nice. So whenever you're frying anything, even bhajis, uh, this is a good trick. I've learned this from my mother-in-law. Just add a little bit of the hot oil to your batter. So you don't need to add any soda. This just does the work of making the batata vadas nice and crispy. So now we have to start frying our vadas. So once our oil has reached the right temperature, we're just going to dip these vadas and coat them evenly into the batter. And then just put them in the oil and let them fry. Now all those little uh, fried batter that you see around, the little tidbits, keep collecting those two in a separate uh, plate with a kitchen napkin where we're going to drain off the excess oil. We're going to make a nice red chutney out of that. And even once we have finished frying all the vadas and you have some batter, just take them on the on the you know on your fingertips and drop them into the hot oil because we we need those little fried uh, batter parts. We're going to make a lovely red spicy chutney for the vada. So keep collecting those. Now drain your vadas once they're nice and golden brown on a kitchen napkin or a kitchen towel. So now I'm going to show you how we make this lovely red, dry, spicy chutney. Okay, so these are vadas are ready. They're nice and brown, golden brown and really yummy. So this is the all the batter, the fried batter that we collected. Now take a mortar and pestle or you can use a mixer. We're going to put all of this into that. And we're going to save some of it. Actually, don't put all of it. We're going to save some of this. Uh, because this will add a lovely crunch to our vada pao. So save some of it. Use half of it in a mortar and pestle. Now this is a kanda lasun masala that you get in the market very easily. If you're not able to get your hands on it, there's no problem. Just use two or three small cloves of garlic, some salt and red chili powder. That is a spicy chili powder. And just mix all of this together. I like doing it in a mortar and pestle because you get a lovely coarse consistency. If you're doing it in your mixer, just blitz it. Don't grind it to a very fine powder. It should have a little bit of a coarse uh, consistency like a lasun chutney. Or you can even add a lasun chutney. I will leave a link below on how I prepare my lasun chutney. So just grind it like this to a coarse powder. And once it's done, just take it out into a small uh, vest, uh, small cup and keep it aside. Now we're also going to need some sweet tamarind chutney. I will leave a link below on how you can make homemade sweet tamarind chutney. If you're not able to do it, no problem. You can always buy the ready-made tamarind chutney that's easily available in stores. You can even use that. But I will leave a link below for both the lasun chutney as well as the uh, tamarind chutney. Now we have uh, some of this fried uh, batter also and this is some very finely chopped onion with a little bit of chaat masala added. So now we're going to assemble this vada pao. Now if you want, you can also use something called cornflakes chuda in, in, uh, in place of the fried batter. Now we're going to take pao, just cut it up, leaving one side intact. First apply the sweet chutney evenly everywhere. Then the spicy red chutney, then some onion. See that it coats the bread properly. And then add some of this fried batter or you can add this cornflakes chura. Even that is amazing. And then just place your vada in the middle and close up the top of the pao. And your vada pao is all ready. This is a favorite snack at our home. 
So I'll show you one more, the assembly. You can have this as a complete meal. This is an ideal, ideal uh, snack, dinner. We can have it at any time at our home. We just love it. So friends, this is a batata vada recipe. Come vada pao recipe. So I hope you like this recipe. Friends, let's start with today's recipe. Now here I have one large tomato which I've chopped very fine into these small little cubes. One large capsicum chopped very fine. This is one large onion chopped very fine. These are about six to seven large cloves of garlic chopped very fine. So if you chop them up really really fine you know it gets uh, everything gets uh, you know blended well together now here i have about one teaspoon of chaat masala some fresh coriander about one fourth cup this is about two tablespoons of pav bhaji masala and one inch of ginger grated and a little bit of butter as required now here in a pan i'm going to be heating one teaspoon uh, of uh, oil as well as half a tablespoon of butter now you can skip the butter if you don't want but it adds a lovely flavor now i'm going to add the onion and i'm going to fry the onion really well now i'm going to add my grated ginger and i'm going to fry everything really well next goes in the tomato and i'm going to cover and cook till the tomato gets nice and cooked now i'm going to add some red kashmiri chili powder this is optional just for the color next goes in some salt to taste Again, I'm going to cover and cook till, you know, uh, the, the onions and the tomato uh, leave out some liquid. Now I'm going to add the capsicum and I'm going to fry the capsicum well too. Now I'm going to add the pav bhaji masala and fry everything well. The aroma in my kitchen is just fantastic with this pav bhaji masala. And now I'm going to add the chaat masala. This also really enhances the flavor of this dish. And now I'm going to fry everything really, really well. And I'm going to add my fresh coriander and turn off the flame. I'm going to mix everything well together. And then I'm just going to set this aside till it comes to room temperature. And I'm going to transfer it into a bowl and set it aside to use later. Now here I've taken about one tablespoon of butter and melted it. To this I'm going to add a one fourth teaspoon of chaat masala and one fourth teaspoon of cumin or jeera powder. And I'm going to add all of that garlic that I chopped fine as well as the coriander. I'm going to give everything a good mix. Now I'm going to cut up the pao and I'm going to apply this butter mixture evenly all over the pao. And then I'm going to heat up my pan. I'm using an iron heavy duty pan. I'm going to add a little bit of butter and I'm going to fry the pao uh, with the butter side down. Next, I'm going to apply the mixture that we had prepared with the onions and the capsicums and the tomato and the pao bhaji masala onto one half of each pao and a little bit of grated cheese. Then I'm just going to close the pao like this prepare as many as I require so this was my family so I prepared about two pounds for each person this is a little bit on the heavy side so those of you who are health conscious or at the moment you know on a diet this is definitely not for you and now I'm just going to apply a little bit of butter onto the pow and I'm just going to nicely roast the top of the pow like I said, this is heavy on the tummy, so you can have just one or just two at the most. And you're just going to fry the pao until it becomes nice and golden brown. And your masala garlic cheese pao is all ready and it is super, super delicious. Do give it a try guys, it's really worth it.
I have my apron on and you've seen all the ingredients that I've shown you. So now let's start with the recipe. that the vegetables are cooking really quickly. I don't have to wait for a long time for the vegetables to get cooked. And the handle, it doesn't get heated up at all. It's so easy to handle the, uh, the, the pan. It's really a dream come true for me. trick what the butter does is it adds a little bit of its own flavor and now since we're going to be simmering this for just about five or ten minutes stirring in between don't forget to stir in between and just check that everything is coming together and keep it on a very low flame for about five to ten minutes checking on it every time and then you will see after ten minutes that the flavor of the butter has nicely got itself incorporated into the pow bhaji so let's see how see you after ten minutes Thank you. 